How's it going YouTube? Welcome to another episode of Boa Breeding Profiles brought to you by SignatureSnakes.com. This is the third episode in the series where I'm going to actually start to get into the planned pairings that I have for my boas and boa morphs over this year and the coming year. Um, I just wanted to kick off a little introduction real quick. Uh, the first two episodes that we talked about uh, were on pricing and quality and some things that go into both pricing and determining a quality boa. Um, you definitely want to consider that stuff before you just decide to buy a boa more for any boa constrictor for that matter. Uh, but now that we've uh, talked about that in the first episode and kind of set the stage, I wanted to get into actual one of the pairings, or actually one of the pairings that I have for this upcoming season. Um, the two boas that I have around my shoulders here are a beautiful pair. Um, we'll start with this gorgeous female here. Uh, this is Delilah. She was produced in 2006. She's a ghost boa, so that means she's hypomelanistic, which reduces black in the animal, and she's also anatheristic, which completely eliminates red. On top of that, she's also het for albino, which means when paired with another het or albino boa, she can produce albino babies. So remember, ghost means hypo and anery. She's also head for albino, so we call her a ghost head albino. Uh, this other boa, this beautiful little guy who's maybe hiding around back, there he is. Uh, that is George. You guys have probably seen him in a number of my videos, but he is a super salmon jungle het albino. Uh, you can see, uh, when I say super salmon, he's kind of a, a more exaggerated form of hypo. Um, salmon uh, and orange tail are both types of hypomelanism, um, but hypomelanism, like I said, is a great reduction in black in the animal, and you can have a super form, which is an extreme reduction in black. So George is a super salmon. He's also a jungle, which gives him that really cool stripe uh, down the top of his body. Uh, it actually goes through the whole thing and, and kind of a, a little bit of a color intensif intensifier, I guess you would say. Uh, and then, so he's super salmon jungle and he's also het for albino, so which, like I said with Delilah, when you pair with another het or albino baby, you can produce albino boas. Um, so in the case of these two, the goal of the litter is going to be a sunglow jungle het for anery, and I'll explain how we get that. Uh, being that uh, they are both het for albino, um, they have a one in four chance of producing an albino baby. Any baby they come at or produce had a one in four chance of actually looking like an albino. Since George is a super hypo and Delilah is a hypo, that means that all of the litter will be hypos, half of them being supers and half of them being regulars. So what we've got so far is a one in four ch chance of albino. They have to be hypo, so any, bo any baby boa has now a one in four chance of being a sun glow. We move on to the next gene of jungle. Since George is a jungle, he will pass on that trait to every uh, one in every two babies, so basically a 50% chance. So when we take our sun glows at one in four, we take the jungle at one in two, now we're at one in eight chance for a sun glow jungle. Delilah, like I said, she's a ghost, so she's hypo and anery with anathrism. It's a simple recessive trait, meaning that since she is anery, she has two alleles, so no matter which she passes on, it will be an anery allele, meaning that every single baby will at least be het for anery. So I know it gets confusing, but we'll go back through it. One in four chance to be albino. They have to be hypomelanistic, so you're at a one in four for a sun glow. Uh, a one in two chance of being jungle, so when you take one in four times one in two, you're now at one in eight for a sun glow jungle, and all of the babies have to be het for anery, which means they can produce an anery baby. Uh, that means that one in eight now are sun glow jungles het for anery, each of them having a 50% chance of being a super hypo. So I know it gets confusing. I want to put up a screenshot of my boa morph calculator. Uh, what you can see is the different uh, combinations of, uh, or excuse me, the different probable outcomes for each gene. And then below that, now you see a list of the eight different outcomes uh, that will occur inside this litter. Um, so if you guys, it's actually 16, but that's only because of the fact that every baby is a possible super hypo. Um, so you guys can uh, see that listing right there, but um, when you just come back and take a look at the boas themselves, very beautiful animals. Uh, a really interesting pair. Um, they actually weren't in the cage together, so I hope nobody thinks that I just pulled them out while they were courting each other. Um, I'm actually going to put them back in together. It's kind of cooled down here, and, and we'll see if uh, Delilah will be receptive at all. But uh, George is always interested. <laughs> you can see he's doing a little tongue flick on her tail uh, and all that. But uh, the, the babies should be phenomenal. I mean, if you look at a sun glow in my collection, that's Wendy. It's kind of the albino with the exaggerated reds and oranges. Uh, jungle is that full stripe and, and really bold colors. Um, so, you know, imagine a sun glow with that full stripe and then being het for anery, they would have the uh, capability to produce an anery baby. 
meaning that you could get all the way up to moon below jungles with them. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, you can see very docile creatures, beautiful animals, uh, even you know the, the, the biggest and all that, they tend to just be uh, big puppy dogs. I mean, just very calm, uh, very you know relaxed and all that stuff. You wouldn't actually say that boas like to be held, although there may be some that, that do uh, appear to enjoy it. It's more of just uh, they're, they're willing to tolerate it. <laughs> um, whereas you know other snakes are really fast, they're always trying to get away, nippy and all that kind of stuff. You know, nine out of 10 boas are just gonna be docile giants. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Like I said, uh, make sure you go check out the website, SignatureSnakes.com. If you're interested in boa morphs, uh, make sure to send me an email with your uh, uh, an outside email address in it, and I can send you the morph calculator for free. Uh, we've also got a version 2 of that in the making, which is uh, only a couple weeks away from completion. That will take into consideration, uh, aside from the six genes in the current morph calculator, we're going to add in a lot of the cool stuff like the Paradigm Project, um, some of the other stuff like Aztec, Maroons, uh, a little bit more of the uh, newer edge morphs. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video, like I said, uh, on boa breeding profiles. This is George and Delilah. You guys can check them out on my website in the boa projects tab. And uh, if you are interested in any babies that they might have, make sure you sign up on the waiting list uh, or shoot me an email and I will keep your contact information for down the road. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching this uh, episode of Boa Breeding Profiles by Signature Snakes, and we will see you next week on episode four when we get into the next pairing that I have planned. Thanks a lot.